The story behind this rare car found at the bottom of a lake is utterly fascinating. We all know it's more important to value people and experiences over physical possessions, but it can't be denied that certain inanimate objects are directly tied to our heartstrings. We spend a lot of time in our cars, for example, so we associate them with memorable trips, conversations, and other good and bad times. And boy, if there ever was a car that told that story, it's this one. The custom-built Bugatti Type 22 Brescia Roadster that was discovered at the border of Switzerland and Italy was already a one-of-a-kind vehicle on its own. But what happened to it made it even more remarkable. The Bugatti in question switched hands several times, and nobody's entirely sure why it moved around so much in its early years. Regardless, where it eventually ended up and how it got there just might surprise you. In 2009, a custom-built 1925 Bugatti Type 22 Brescia Roadster was recovered from the bottom of Lake Maggiore, which sits near France at the border of Italy and Switzerland. It had been there since 1935, but the story behind it was even more fascinating. Although the vehicle was built in Brescia, Italy, it was originally registered in Nancy, France. A plate on the car read, George Neely, 48 Rue Nulet, Paris, and it seemed highly likely that Monsieur Neely was its proper owner for a time. With its one and a half liter engine, four cylinders, and ability to reach speeds up to 100 miles per hour, it was an incredible work of engineering for its day. At some point, though the exact time is unknown, the car must have changed owners. According to one legend, Rene Dreyfus, a champion Grand Prix driver, was drunkenly playing poker when he lost the vehicle to Adalbert Bodie, a Swiss playboy, in 1934. According to another story, it came into the hands of Switzerland-born architect Marco Max Schmuglerski, who had the car taken from him when he neglected to pay the fees for importing it. So how the heck did it end up in the lake? Whatever happened between the owners was neither here nor there because it ended with Swiss officials literally rolling the car into the lake. It wasn't seen again until it was discovered by diver Ugo Pilon in 1967. From there, it became a popular location for other divers but there was an important reason why it finally was brought up to the surface. On February 1st of 2008, a young man named Domino Tamagni was tragically beaten to death by three people. Both Domino and his father, Maurizio, had belonged to a local sub-aqua club in the Swiss town of Ascona. The community decided that if they pulled the legendary Bugatti out of the lake, they could sell it and use the money to raise funds for a charity in Domino's name, entitled Fondazione Domino Tamagni which would aim to tackle the problem of juvenile violence. A dive club managed to recover the car in 2009, and it was sold to Peter Mullen of the Mullen Automotive Museum, located in Oxnard, California, in 2010 for roughly $370,000. It's now kept in a museum, but it isn't treated like most vintage cars would be. Instead, with its unusual coloration, shape, and condition, it seems almost like an art installation in a private room. What a story this one special car was able to tell. This Bugatti had incredible beginnings on its own, but who could have ever expected it to have such dramatic memories tied to it? Share this fascinating car's history with your friends.